guys, welcome back to Built by Design. I'm Nate the Intern, and today we're gonna to be talking about 2D sketches, and really what you guys are gonna do as soon as you get back from kickoff. So, one of the things that's important to remember about design is that capturing your initial thoughts is incredibly important. Setting hard and attainable goals for your designs, and then drawing those out and showing how you're going to achieve them. So let's jump right in and start talking about drawing our designs. I strongly believe in creating digital copies of every design and drawing you have. Whether that's by using a tool like Autodesk Sketchbook Designer like I'm going to use, or simply scanning in paper and pencil drawings after meetings. So in the Autodesk Sketchbook Designer, one of the nice things is, is that I'm able to really quickly lay out things like drive trains or other things that need you know, perfect circles or whatnot that are much harder to draw and convey in, you know, real life. Now, one thing that I can do is go up and get tools like line tools, but see, that's only a great line. By clicking, I'm actually able to grab that line, and by grabbing it here, I'm actually able to adjust where it is. Um, I'm able to adjust length, I can set, even set, have it end in center points of wheels. It, it makes the whole thing a lot nicer. All right, as I go up here, I'm going to create a very easy to do, use model of a robot that has a claw. Now, the reason I'm creating a claw robot is that for this set of videos, we're gonna be designing a robot for the 2007 game, Rack and Roll. Rack and Roll was chosen by my team in order to create a similarity to the 2011 game so you guys can see how this would relate while presenting something slightly different in the fact that the 2007 robots actually had to lift each other up using ramps that they carried on their own person or robot as the case may be now here i'm going to just add a few more lines to show us what i might use for a robot now I'm actually going in here and perfecting that geometry by clicking this refresh button and I'm actually able to create a very nice looking geometric sketch. Let's go and let's jump right in from our two-dimensional sketch and we've emailed this to our team, but what is our next step? Well, our next step in my book is to create a two-dimensional sketch in Autodesk Inventor. What this is going to allow us to do is to, to create a dimension sketch as well as allow us to look at some very simple and easy to figure out geometry decisions such as is my arm long enough is my wheelbase wide enough what are my pro problems going to be what am i going to need to prototype to prove now as soon as we open up autodesk inventor i'm actually going to look at and say okay i need to create a new a standard part file um once we have our part file open where it brings us right into the sketching plane and we're going to start creating a sketch very quickly by saying as soon as I use my circle tool I can type in dimensions so I'm gonna hit six inches I now have a six inch wheel I can go up get a line tool look for that little dotted line that means it's gonna be perpendicular to the center point say 30 inch long wheelbase then notice how this is connected still it wants me to it thinks that I might want to keep sketching but instead I'm gonna say done now I'm gonna go up and get something called a coincident constraint. The coincident constraint allows me to constrain two points together. In this case, I'm going to use the center point of the line and the center point of the wheel to keep them centered on each other. Now, here I'm just going to go in and again just dimension out these wheels. Nice thing about this is that if I want to come in here and edit the 30 inch dimension to a 20 inch dimension, because we're going to have a wide-based robot as opposed to a thin-based robot, I can do that and everything will adapt. Again, this is all about keeping your designs fluid to the latest point possible. Now, here we go, and we're going to say, okay, I want a 45-inch tall robot with a... with an indiscriminately long arm. Again, I won't dimension that. But what I can come in and do is say, go up, get my dimension tool, and say, I want that to be 130 degrees. Lastly, let's go in here, and we'll apply just some simple uh, triangular bracing for that arm. And I'm actually pretty happy with this. Another cool thing though, if I wanted to, 
I can say, well, what happens if I bring this arm down a little bit? You know, and we can start exploring with that. So, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to take these dimensions we've applied, turn them into something called parameters, and manipulate those parameters to perfect your design using something that I call design optimization in the iLogic tools in Inventor. Now, if this interests you, please apply this. I think that with these two-dimensional sketches are really helpful, and I think they can actually really help you solve some design problems and remove some obstacles from your team's path over the course of a season. Good luck out there.